spokesperson for the International Committee for the Red Cross. And, and today really is the perfect day to talk with her about these daily four-hour pauses in fighting that have been announced, what they might mean for its mission. Thank you, Alona, for being with us. And, and just your reaction to this. Our reporters on the ground are wondering if this is uh, much to do about a little because some of this has already been going on, right? The Israelis have opened a humanitarian corridor. How significant is what uh, President Biden uh, and the White House announced today? Well, I think we will have to see what happens in Gaza, the situation of civilians. And what we have been seeing until today, uh, the situation is extremely dire. Uh, the day before yesterday, when my uh, colleagues uh, went to Gaza City to deliver urgent medical supplies on the way, they saw people, women, children, the handicapped people on wheelchairs who were completely lost, disoriented. They were... Uh, asking, are we safe? Where can we go? Where can we get food? Where we can get water? And uh, this situation is just getting ex more dire by the day. Now the markets have completely collapsed. There is no food to be found. And uh, the stories that our surgical team that is operating on their patients in the southern Gaza are telling me every day are uh, dramatic. So do you think this four-hour daily pause in fighting is enough to, to get the civilians out, even those who might not have the resources or the ability to leave northern Gaza? Well, I think the situation for Gaza civilians is so desperate that any respite uh, will be a welcome relief for them, just for people to be able to go out and try to find some food and try to find some water or uh, look for their family members without having to risk their own lives because this is what's been happening until now. Uh, so we have to see how this is implemented, how this happens. But uh, as an organization, what we have been calling for is for more supplies, more humanitarian aid to reach civilians because the situation is getting increasingly dire. Our surgeons are operating every day on severely wounded uh, patients, half of them children with severe burns, and they're running out of uh, basic supplies like gauze, like anesthetics. Um, it is heartbreaking to watch and to hear these testimonies that they share every day. Well, I understand, too, that you had a convoy uh, that came under attack. You were trying to get medical supplies into the area. Can you just give us more information on that and what happened uh, and how what you're doing now to protect your own? This came as a shock to all our colleagues. Indeed, this happened uh, the day before yesterday when uh, our colleagues were on the way to Gaza City. They, uh, were, they were heading to Al-Quds Hospital run by the Palestinian Red Cross, Red Crescent Society, where they were going to deliver urgent medical supplies and they came under fire where two trucks were damaged and one of our drivers was lightly wounded. Um, they had to reroute and they changed the course and they went to Shifa hospital instead. And again, when they arrived in Shifa, these scenes that we are seeing in hospitals are just devastating. You see doctors and nurses working 24 hour shifts without supplies, without water and electricity, and also thousands and thousands of people, desperate people everywhere, on the floor, in the corridors, trying to uh, look for safety because they think that hospital is a, the, probably the only place where they can be safe. But unfortunately, what we have been seeing in Gaza, that even the hospitals are becoming the scenes of dead and destruction, and even our humanitarian convoy with medicine uh, even our colleagues, they, they had to go through this uh, horrendous experience trying to, del to deliver urgent relief supplies. Uh, yeah, what you're describing, Alona, is just is unimaginable. It's a, it's a hellscape, the death, the destruction, and the humanitarian issues. 
beyond the violence, badly needed medical supplies, uh, food and water. Uh, you, I know the ICRC has been trying to make that happen as well. And from what you're describing that you're hearing from, from people who are coming to you for help, there's shock and trauma involved just being under that bombardment. Have you got a sense from your colleagues what life is like in Gaza now? I think that right now, yes, we're all concentrated on the immediate. We're all concentrated, and my colleagues in Gaza, it's all about saving lives, trying to um, evacuate the wounded, trying to operate, operate on critically injured patients, getting some clean water uh, that's becoming more and more scarce, but also the stories of uh, pain and horror and devastation that coming every day, they are just unimaginable. So today I spoke with our chief surgeon and he said that while they were in the operating theater, operating on a, a five-year-old child with severe burns who lost uh, uh, almost entire family, when they came out of the operation theater, his colleagues found out about the uh, death in their own families in the new airstrikes. And this is the experience of people every single day, people that we work with. And uh, I don't know, I just think it's impossible to imagine uh, what people in Gaza are going through right now. Alona Senyenko, we so appreciate your time and just all the efforts that uh, you have been doing since this began and, and how you jump into every single crisis around the world. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Coming up, lights, camera, action. Now sign the contract. The historic Hollywood ending as SAG-AFTRA reaches a tentative deal with the studios.